Welcome back to another video of the complete Java Data Structures Algorithms Bootcamp. In this video, we will be learning about searching in matrices. So like if you're given a sorted matrix, how do you search in that? And uh, how do you, you know, reduce the search space? How do you apply binary search in it, for example? So all these questions we'll be doing. And also, uh, since this is a complete bootcamp, so we, have, we are covering the entire bootcamp from scratch. No prerequisites are required. So make sure you check out the uh, playlist link in the description below. You will find all the lectures over there for free. And if you want to learn about the assignments and notes and all the code that you want to see, the link for that is also in the description. Before we get started, make sure you pause the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We do some amazing work on the channel and uh, we're going to be, you know, bringing such uh, nice content to you regularly. Cool. So let's get started. So with the first question, uh, if you don't know what matrices are or what all these things are, uh, we've already covered it in like the arrays lecture. So make sure you check it out. But uh, let's get started with um, searching in matrices. Okay, matrices like a uh, an, a 2D array, something for example. So if you're not aware of what are 2D arrays and all these things, uh, make sure you check out the links in the description. So we're talking about uh, searching in a 2D array, right? So if you're given a simple array like this, we're given an array, let's say a three by three array. You're given elements like 18, 9, 12, 36, minus 4, 91, 44, 33, 16. And you're saying that, okay, this is a matrix that is matrix given to you. And the target element that you need to search is equal to what? Let's say 91. You need to search whether 91 exists in this array or not. How do we do that? It's very simple. You know, this is not sorted. It's just like random numbers. So you keep checking one by one. You run a nested for loop. Again, if you are not aware of the nested for loop and how to traverse, how to basically run through a 2D array, pause this video. Check out the link in the description below. There's a section on arrays. But there's a separate video on arrays. In that, we have covered the 2D, you know, uh, for loop. Check that out. There you will understand how each and every element is. You're going through it. I never skip anything. Everything that I say, I've already covered previously, or I mentioned that we will cover it in the later courses. So we can run two for loops, one for the rows and one for the columns, like we have learned already. So you can say zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So I can say for row is equal to zero, row is less than N, row plus plus. And I can say for column is equal to zero, column is less than also n, column plus plus. So it's going to be like if array of row comma column is equal to target, it means that you have found the answer. Okay. Otherwise, after running this for loop, you have not found the answer. Just return minus one means element does not exist. So it will start like this for zero. Basically, this outer loop is for the row. And this inner loop is actually for every single column. I've explained this in detail, so make sure you check out if you don't understand the array lecture. It's going to be like, okay, is 18 equal to target? No. Is 9 equal to target? No. Is 12 equal to target? No. This loop is over. It will come out of here. R will now be equal to 1. R will now be equal to 1. Same column will now run for R is equal to 1. Is 36 equal to 91? No. Is this equal to 91? No. Is this equal to 91? Yes. Answer. Found my answer. Answer, I have found at where? column 1 comma 2 sorry uh, index number 1 comma 2 first row uh, row number 1 column number second okay row number 1 column number second here's your answer okay so this is a very simple search and uh, what is the worst number of steps is going to take n into n which is equal to n square is equal to the time complexity. Don't worry about this, uh, the big O notation, because we've already covered like a little bit about it, but in detail, what is big O notation, like the mathematics of it, we will cover in time complexity lecture. So if you're watching it in the future, uh, we have already covered it. Make sure you check out the link in the description. Okay, so at maximum, it will take n square comparison. So compl uh, time complexity is O of n squared. Or if the number of rows are m, n and number of columns are m for example so the complexity will be equal to what n cross m 
okay cool let's take another question this is a very simple one let's take let's say we have our uh, something like this let's say we have a matrix let's say the matrix is sorted in a row wise and column wise manner in a row wise and column wise manner let's say the matrix is sorted like this now what do i mean by this let's say you're given a matrix like this okay okay so you're in something like 10 20 30 40 you're given like 15 25 35 45 given 28 29 uh, 37 and 49 and you're given something like 33 34 38 and 50 you can see that row wise and column wise sorted row wise sorted and column wise sorted it means that every row is sorted like this also if you look or if you look at any column that will also be sorted Take any row, row number, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, these are the columns, these are the rows. Take any row, it will be sorted. Let's say row number 2, 28, 29, 37, 49, sorted. Let's say column number 3, 40, 45, 49, 50, it's also sorted. Okay, so now you need to search an element in this. Let's say you are trying to search, let's say target element. Try to search for 37. Try to search for 37. How are we going to do that? Let's see. So the very first solution that comes to our mind is this similar one. <laughs> we can do something like this and then we can search for 37 O of n squared. But the thing is that this is not efficient and we are not really utilizing what has been provided to us. For us, they have provided that the matrix is, matrix is sorted. So that is something we have not uh, thought about. So in this case, what we can do is, when you're given such large search spaces, try to figure out how you can minimize the search space. This is also a very nice pattern or a hint in coding interviews that you will get. So if they're asking you to search something and there's a little, like a bigger data or whatever, Try to see how you can minimize that search. Try to see how you can minimize that search. So for example, if you're trying to search for 37, okay, if you're trying to search for 37. So here, what are the few cases, uh, you know, when you try to search? So we always look for cases. Let's try to see how many cases we can get over here. So let's say you try by, let's say normal thing that you were doing before. Let's say I try to do this only, okay. Let's say I try to do this only, I can try start start by searching like this, normal, normal, normal. Okay, so whenever I am comparing a particular element with my target element, what are the cases that I can get now that it's a sorted array? The first case can be case number one. Think about it. There can be as many cases, you know, as you know, like there will be. So let's try to figure out how many cases can be there. So trying to search for uh, elements. So uh, for example, let's say you're trying to search for um, something like, uh, let's say you're at 34 or whatever. Okay. So if the given number, the target number is actually greater than the number that you are at right now. Okay. So for example, if you're trying to search for, let's say, if you're at this particular, so you're trying to say, hey, is this equal to target? So, you know, in binary search, we are doing equal to less than or e greater than. Similarly, the same thing we will be doing over here. The same concept will be applying over here. Case number one can be, if the element is equal to equal to target, answer found. Case number two can be equal to what? If the element that you are at is smaller than target in this case what will happen 
it basically means that all the elements that we have in this row of this element try to see so for example if i say um you know if i talk about uh, 25 for example so here we might do something and then case number three can be something like this so case number three will be equal to that if the element that you are at you know that let's say you're searching for is actually greater than the target so the, the currently the, the one we are comparing is actually greater than target so these were the three cases that we had in like binary search also okay in binary search we also had a upper bound and lower bound okay we had two places from which we were comparing so in this case what all cases are going to compare with it what is the start and end going to be is my question start and end going to be so in matrix related questions when you're trying to reduce the search space you have to think about how you can eliminate rows and columns how you can eliminate rows and columns so let's talk about the element being less than target okay so let's say i'm talking about 25 or 29 so is 29 less than equal uh, less than 37 yes it is but does it really tell you anything does it really tell you anything not really what can you do if 29 is less than 37 can you can you eliminate this row no can you eliminate this uh, so, sorry this column no can you eliminate this row no not really no no particular proof over here as such because it might be possible that uh, you know it might be possible that uh, there's some other like uh, you know number over here so for example you cannot say something like hey 29 is actually less than 37 so all the elements in this column will be less than 37 no it might be possible that here you had 39 or something and then you change this accordingly okay so this is not gonna work that is why we have to figure out a lower bound and upper bound the lower bound is obviously going to be this one okay this is the smallest number upper bound is going to be in this last column okay so this particular row this is the lower bound this last column is the upper bound so you're going to compare it with which number lower bound and upper bound this one this is the one you are going to compare it with so now that we know let's say the search space has reduced to you know like uh, let's say we're trying to say this is the the, the row zero is the lower bound and uh, last row is the upper bound so let's say the target element is actually let's say in this case uh, you know less than the element that we have you know with its comparison so it's saying that okay 40 is actually greater than the target element so now we know that okay this is the last element of the rightmost element does it not mean that every single element in this particular column is going to be equal to, uh, greater than target we know that we are so 2k two points you might be having questions so two points point number one we are checking the last row sorry we are checking the last column okay so here it's saying that uh, the target element is smaller than this particular number and we know the target element let's say is smaller than this number and we know that all of these numbers are greater than this number so does it not mean that all of these numbers are also going to be greater than target element hence ignore this means if your element is greater than target element you can do column minus minus now your matrix remaining is this one now it will check again it's going to check okay is 30 equal to greater than or less than the element like the target if it's 30 uh, equal to target greater than target or less than target it's going to be like it's less than target means this one case number two in that case what will happen pause this video think about it so if this number is actually smaller than the target number and we know that all the other numbers on the left hand side of this are going to be smaller than this number does it not mean that all the left hand side numbers are also going to be smaller than the target number hence we can ignore this entire row hence row plus plus now our search space is, is reduced to this is 35 
equal to target, greater than target or less than target. 35 is less than target. So again, row plus plus, this row will be removed. Now the elements will be something like this. This particular one. Is 37 equal to target greater than or less than target? It's going to be like it's equal to target. Okay, answer found. That's your question. That is it. As simple as that. So this is a search space that is going to be it. We are going to start searching from row 0 and column last. Okay, and we're going to keep running this loop. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to keep running my loop till my row is actually less than the length and column is actually greater than, uh, you know, greater than or equal to 0. Because if we are doing column minus minus and it becomes negative, that will give us error. Okay. Cool. What is the complexity of this going to be? Like how many uh, comparisons is it, is it making? So we're only making one, com one, one traversal. We had the row 0 and column n minus 1. Okay, like the length of the entire like matrix minus 1. So it's like from 0 till n we are running and uh, let's, let's try to... Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is that this row is starting from here. So this row is actually going from 0 till n like this. Okay, and this column is actually going from like behind from n minus 1 till 0 like this. So it's what equal to? Total number of steps equal to what? n times it's going down and in the worst case let's say n times is going behind. Are you all able to understand? So column is actually decreasing by 1. So column was last like okay okay uh, column number 3 then column number 2 let's try to call search for column number 1 let's try to search in column number 0. n times another case might be okay row number 0 row number 1 row number 2 row number last n times total n plus n is equal to what? 2n times it's making comparisons. So time complexity is big O of n because constants are removed in complexity. Space complexity means auxiliary space. Are we taking any extra space? No, we are not. That is equal to constant. This big O notation we will learn later on. Okay, so let's try to code this particular thing. So I will just make another class over here. I'll say row call matrix. So row wise sorted matrix and column wise sorted matrix. So here I'm just going to say, let me create another function. I'm going to create a static. I'm going to create, let's say, uh, I'm going to return a return an array and I'm going to create a search. Here I'm just going to take a 2D matrix and I'm going to take my target element. That is it. That is it. All right. So what is the start index going to be and what is the end index going to be? So I'm going to say my my start which is my like uh, row is starting from 0 and I'm taking column starting from matrix dot length minus 1 that is it okay or I can just uh, yeah that looks good so I'm gonna say what is the condition for it the condition is that uh, while my row is actually less than the length and column is actually greater than or equal to 0. So I can say while my row is less than the length which is matrix dot length and my column is greater than or equal to 0 I have to make 3 checks. So 3 checks if element is equal to target. So if matrix of row comma column is equal to equal to target I can just say found my answer new integer and the answer I have found is equal to row comma column. Okay. Otherwise, I can say that um, if the matrix, which is the second case, if the element is actually less than target element. So if the matrix of row and column is actually less than my target element, if the target element is bigger, so the target element is bigger. In that case, what am I going to do? I'm going to say row plus plus. So I'm going to say row plus plus. Otherwise, I'm going to do what? Column minus minus. That looks good. And if nothing has been returned, it means that it does not exist. So I can just say return 
minus 1 comma minus 1 that is it so i have an integer array like this integer array is equal to okay you can also uh, it does not have to be like n cross n you can just you know uh, replace this with like m as well this can also be like n cross m matrix okay so that is basically like the same thing only okay so the only thing that will change over here is this particular value we'll just put the last column value over here so it does not even have to be n cross n it can be n cross m also the size of the matrix so what did i have in my example 10 20 30 40 10 20 30 40 15 25 35 45 15 25 35 45 and then i have something like 28 29 37 49 28 29 37 49 and then i have 33 34 38 50 33 34 38 50 let's say i try to search for um try to search for in the matrix sorry it's uh, called array over here so in the array let's say i try to search for 37 this will give this will return me an array so i can say array is dot two string like this it should give me 0 1 2 0 1 2 2 comma 2 should give me 2 comma 2 giving me 2 comma 2 that looks good let's say I try to search for 49 it should, give, it should give me 2 comma 3 2 comma 3 let's say I try to search for something that does not exist like uh, 39 it should give me minus 1 comma minus 1 because it does not exist minus 1 comma minus 1 looks good let's say yeah that looks good pretty cool stuff all right let's look into the next question you can also debug it like this uh, let's put a debug pointer over here debug it and then see how it's working internally we have covered this thing in the previous lectures of arrays or how to debug a 2d array so if you want to check it out check out the links in the description below now let's look into the next question now in the previous uh, question the array was not like the the matrix what was not like strictly sorted right we knew that okay uh, it was just sorted in row and column wise manner so that's why we were not able to apply like let's say binary search or whatever uh, but let's say we talk about a sorted matrix. Okay, so what do we mean by a sorted matrix? If we take a look at another question. We say search in a sorted matrix. Okay, so the idea is that you said, say, let's say you're given a matrix like this. Let's say the matrix given to you is something like... Um, uh, this does not have to be like n cross n it can also be n cross m just like in the previous example so what do i mean by like sorted matrix and how is it different than previous one let's see okay so we can say we create something like 1 2 3 4 okay 5 6 7 8 something like this 9 10 11 12 I'm just adding simple numbers 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, now in this case, what is happening is that uh, array is sorted in a like sorted manner. So go like this, then we start going like this, like this, then like this. This is a sorted matrix. Okay, so the question now is that uh, how do we approach this problem? How do we approach this problem? Okay, let's see. In short, what I can say is that um, what is the pattern over here if you see that first element of a particular row is greater than the last element of the previous row. Okay, that's why it's like a strictly sorted matrix. So, few solutions that come to mind, pause about, pause and uh, think about it. First one is like a normal search, you know, n square or n cross m time complexity. Second one can be convert this into a 1D array then apply binary search on it. So convert it into something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट टिल सिक्सटीन देन अप्लाई बाइन रिसर्च ऑन दिस कैन डू समथिंग लाइक दिस बट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट सिंस वी नो इट्स अ सॉर्टेड मैट्रिक्स लेट्स ट्राई टू सी हाउ वी कैन अप्लाई बाइन रिसर्च ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर वन ओके सो इन बाइन रिसर्च वी नीड द थ्री केसेस ऑलरेडी राइट सो ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टैन एंड लेस दैन राइट and we need like lower bound and upper bound so in the previous example i told you that try to reduce the search space when you are given such a big matrices or whatever so what what i mean by that is eliminating the row eliminating the column or whatever okay so that is what we did in the previous one as well similarly the same thing we will do in this one also but the approach will change why because the array is sorted now so what we are going to do is we are going to start by numbering the indices this is these are the rows these are the columns we are going to start by searching on the middle column okay and also start by searching on the row by the way okay so any one you can use let's say we are searching on the middle column so as we are trying to reduce the sp search space let's see what we can do so let's take the middle column since we know the array is sorted so we will be taking the middle one so middle column is going to be this one let's take this column okay did a little bit all right so we are taking the middle column and in the middle column we are going to check okay we are going to perform binary search on the middle column so take middle column and perform binary search on it because we are trying to reduce the number of rows you can do the same for rows as well take the middle row try to reduce the number of columns you can do that as well okay so we can see that let's say if i'm trying to search for something like 2 uh, let's say i'm trying to search for 2 let's say the target is equal to 2 target is equal to 2 i'm going to perform a binary search on this so binary search middle element is going to be 6 it's going to be saying that target element is actually less than the middle element target element is actually less than the middle element so if i know that target is actually less than the middle element does it not mean that all these other and i know that all these other elements are actually going to be greater than the middle element which is equal to 6 so does it not mean that it will also be greater than the target element if all of these numbers are greater than 6 and i know that 6 is greater than 2 does it not mean that all of these numbers are also greater than 2 which is my target element so can you not say that you can definitely exclude these rows okay hope that makes sense so case comes over here that uh, you know if element is actually like uh, again three cases element if this is equal to if 6 was equal to let's say target okay that way i have found my answer okay case number 2 if element that i'm comparing if this is actually let's say um you know greater than target in that case what is happening i am ignoring the rows ignoring the rows that are in between like uh, up, uh, after it so after this all the rows will be ignored okay cool so ignore rows after it and what is the third case going to be if element is less than target in that case what will happen all the rows above it will get ignored so example you were trying to search for 10 okay and you know that 6 is less than 10 it basically means all the above rows above 6 will also be less than 10 and so all the above ones will be discarded ignore above rows that is what we are trying to this is how we are reducing the search space this is how we are reducing the search space so we are trying to skip the rows 
that we don't want okay in the end what will happen is that uh, only two rows will be remaining in the end only two rows will be remaining because only two elements will be remaining now you may be asking me hey kunal what are the bounds that you are taking over here right what are the bounds of the of the binary search that you are taking over here first thing that i'm taking is a row which is going to start obviously from zero so row is going to start from here like just like in the previous example so this is like my let's say row start okay this is my lower bound upper bound is going to be equal to what so my upper bound is going to be the last row so row end this is going to be my upper bound okay and the middle of this is going to be the middle of this so this plus this divide by 2 this is the middle 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 when two rows are remaining that will be another case in the end let's say two rows are remaining Now search space is reduced to two rows. So one, two, three. Okay, let me change my color over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks pretty good. All right. Cool. So what do we do over here now? If only two rows are remaining so first thing you need to do is first thing you need to do is um, if two rows are remaining and I'm, I'm, I'm always at the middle column okay I'm at the middle column so I'm over here let's say I'm over here first check you need to make is hey do any of these middle column elements contain the answer check whether the mid column you are at you are at contains the answer that is 2 comma 6 try to search in this let's say i'm trying to search for 3 for example okay let's say target is equal to 3 so 2 is not equal to 3 6 is also not equal to 3 then what are you going to do you are going to consider four parts part number one part number two Part number three and part number four. Second point is consider the four parts. Consider the four parts. Okay. So how do we check for that? Check whether like the uh, the target element, which is three. Okay. If it is equal to like any of the middle elements, that's fine. Otherwise, you can see that uh, if it's present in the first half, second half, third half, fourth, or fourth half. Okay. Sound good? Cool. So we're going to check whether three exists over here, 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 or here. And we know that these are, we know that these are what? Sorted, sorted arrays. So definitely, you can do like simple binary search over here simple binary search in these four that's it as simple as that cool all right that is it so it will search over here does three exist in this part of the array does three exist in this part of the array it's going to be like no it does not then it's going to be like does three exist in this part of the array no the three exist in this part of the array the three and four one yes it does answer that's it very simple stuff what is the time complexity like how many comparisons is it going to make so in order to find the two rows it's going to take how many comparisons is it making the size of this particular column what is the size of the column going to be what is this size going to be this size the size is actually equal to the number of rows and we know that if there are n elements, if there are n rows, so the size to find these two columns, uh, the maximum comparison in binary search is going to take log of n. Okay. And then we are searching across the columns also. We are searching across the columns also like this. 
This is going to take how much? This is going to take how much time? If the size of the column is m, let's say in the worst case, log of m, total complexity is what? Big O of log m plus log n. Space complexity or the auxiliary space is constant. Very simple stuff. All right. So don't think about this like hey Kunal you're doing m over here I'll say m over here as well it might be like you know 2m or 3m or 4m or whatever no constants are ignored okay in time complexity constants are ignored why they are ignored we will go into details of this in like the binary search uh, sorry the time complexity lecture let's try to code this thing okay so now let's try to code this I'm gonna create another file I'm gonna call it sorted matrix or something cool and I'm going to create another function which is going to return the uh, the answer for this so it's going to return the value of the the coordinates so I'm going to say static I'm going to return it in an, in an array form an array of size 2 and I'm going to say search and I'm going to search in my matrix and I'm going to have an int target okay that looks good um it may be possible that the matrix is of uh, one dimension so i can say something like rows is equal to matrix dot length and my columns are equal to matrix of zero dot length you know be cautious over here be cautious matrix may be empty so add a check for that yourself okay so here i can say that if my rows are equal to equal to one in that case what do we need to do we need to do something so we would need one more function because we are searching in individual rows as well we are searching in individual rows as well we are applying a simple binary search for example in these rows so we'll need a simple binary search function as well so i can say static int uh, simple binary search binary search and this is just going to take my matrix okay and it's going to take the um, what it's basically going to say that uh, this is basically saying that in which row do you want to search in which row do you want to search and for example let's say here I want to search in in this row but also it's checking from which column till which column do you want to search so I want to search from column number this till column number this column start and column end column start and column end and what do you want to search that is also something it's taking so I'll apply a simple binary search over here while start is less than end is then equal to end simple binary search we have done this before so we're going to say we're going to take the middle element so I'm going to say my middle is going to be equal to what it's going to be like start plus n minus start divided by 2 we've already covered this n minus start divide by 2 okay so much more efficient way to do it now simple binary search condition if the element at the middle of this okay so if uh, at that row if the element at that row's middle so i'm talking about this particular row which is already passed over here and we have now checked for the middle uh, one so this will be the middle one if i'm talking about this particular this particular column this will be the middle one so this rows this middle element is, is this equal to target so basically of matrix of row comma middle equal to equal to target in that case i can just say return new integer the answer is going to be equal to what row comma middle this is going to be 2d array okay that is the case otherwise what can we do i can say if this is less than or greater than or whatever 
so i can say if this is actually less than target otherwise so if this is less than target in that case i can say my start is going to be start is going to be equal to what start is going to be equal to what uh sorry if this is less than target if element lies less than target then end should be mid minus 1 we have simple binary search if you are not aware of this just watch the simple binary search lecture okay no 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 not mid minus 1 if so this is a target target which is greater than middle so this will actually come over here and this will say start uh, if target is greater than middle start will be mid plus 1 yeah that looks good very simple stuff okay cool and in the end if you haven't found you can just return minus 1 comma minus 1 minus 1 comma minus 1 search in the row provided between the columns provided that's it okay so now if we have only one element if we have only one element so we can just say return binary search in the matrix and uh, what is the row going to be zero row because there's only one row what is the start column going to be and end column going to be is this going to be all the entire columns zero till columns like the end column and target will be target that's it that is it A very simple stuff what is the next step uh, so this was the edge case but the next step is actually take the middle uh, middle column this middle column and we have to take the middle we have to perform binary search on the middle column for example so here i'm just going to say that uh, run the loop till two rows are remaining run the loop till two rows are remaining in the end only these two rows will be remaining so in the end uh, row start will be over at here row end will be over here so the condition for two rows remaining will be what row start is equal to row end minus 1 so let's say these two rows were the ones remaining so 3 uh, 2 is equal to 3 minus 1 let's say these two rows were remaining 1 is equal to 2 minus 1 so while i can say my row start where is my row start I haven't taken it over here. Oh, I have to take it also. No problem. I haven't initialized it yet. Row start is starting from zero. Row end is at like the last one. So these are my upper bounds. You can also do it column wise. I am eliminating the rows. You can also eliminate the columns if you want. So this will be equal to total rows minus one. And what is the middle going to be? The middle one, the middle column. So middle column means this particular one, mid column, mid column mid column is going to be uh, column middle following the convention is going to be total number of columns divided by 2 that's it that is it and now my condition is going to be equal to what while my row start is actually less than row end minus 1 while this is true it will be having more than 2 rows while this is true it will have more than two rows which we are trying to eliminate how do we try to eliminate it let's check out check our cases three cases i am not doing anything new all these things i've already explained to you here here are the three cases case number one if element is equal to target okay no problem if the element so first we need to take the middle element so i can say middle is going to be equal to what row start plus row row start plus end by 2 or row plus uh, we have covered this in binary search this formula this formula we have covered in binary search okay because this will be what 2 start plus row minus start so so this will be one second two start plus end minus start yeah that's correct that is correct that is correct so this is actually going to be equal to if i'm saying start this is basically what i'm trying to say start uh plus what is it end minus start divided by two right 
n minus start divide by 2 so this will be 2s like this this and this you can start plus n divide by 2 so exactly the same thing okay cool no problem so that's how we find the middle if you want to look into details of it check out the binary search lecture link in the uh, description below so we have found the middle element now we will just uh, add these three check, case, check cases very simple stuff so if the matrix middle element middle element is equal to what my uh, middle rows which column am I taking middle column I am taking if this is equal to equal to target in that case I can just say return new integer value of the answer what is it like this what is the answer answer is actually equal to now mid comma column mid that's it you are returning that otherwise what do you do if this is actually let's say not equal to equal to but less than target okay if the element is less than target what did we cover for that uh, ignore the above rows so we are ignoring the above rows let's say this was the item I, it was at uh, so it was saying ignore the above rows means start will now be equal to mid start will come below because I'm ignoring these two rows then start will come below so I can say in this case row start is actually equal to middle otherwise uh, if I'm ignoring the bottom ones then end will come above now end will become mid otherwise otherwise row end is going to be equal to mid very simple stuff so once this loop has run uh, we will now have two rows now we have two rows now we have two rows okay we have two rows now what do we need to do so in the end we have two rows remaining check whether the middle elements of the column contain the answer or not so we'll do jack check whether the um, uh, target is in um, the column of two rows we are going to check that so we're going to say if matrix of row start and the middle column which is equal to column of uh, middle if this is equal to equal to target then I'm just going to say return new int r start comma column mid that is it okay otherwise similarly I will check for end as well uh, so I'm going to say Oh, by the way, this condition will be violated. What is the end going to be? End is actually going to be this plus one. Very simple stuff. Okay, checking for start, checking for end. First checking for two, then checking for six. That is simple. That is simple. Otherwise, search in first half. Search in second half, third half and fourth half. Second half third half fourth half that is it when are we going to search in the first half when are we going to search in the first half so what is the first half of the arrays first half is like if the target element the three that we are trying to search let's say um, or let's say if we're, if we're trying to search for one okay so we can say that if we're trying to search for one then uh, what can we say target element is less than equal to this particular one because this is in sorted order all the other elements after be behind this if there were they will be like you know less than one so if I can say that my element is actually less than equal to one search over here if it is less than equal to five search for over here if it is greater than equal to 3 search over here if it is greater than or equal to 7 then search for here so this is basically going to be equal to uh, row is going to be this row okay for for let's say let's say I take for this first half first okay for first half what is it going to be 
for first half it's going to say that uh, if target is actually less than equal to one search in the first half of the array okay and what is the first half what is the less than equal to one going to be from which what is this element going to be what is the coordinate of this element coordinate is row start because this is row start this is row uh, row row start plus one row start plus one i don't have to write that this is row start so it's going to be like row start comma mid column minus one so this is going to be c mid minus one row start comma c mid minus one okay no problem so it's going to be like if my target element is less than equal to matrix of row start and c mid minus one in that case i'm going to search in the first half i'm going to copy paste this thing like this okay what is the second half going to be second half is going to be if target element is greater than equal to this if target element is greater than equal to three means this is sorted array so you can find you know search for any of this and in any of this part uh, in this entire like second half so what is the coordinate of this row start comma mid plus one so if target element is greater than equal to row start comma mid plus one no problem what is the third half going to be um row start plus one comma c mid minus one so row start plus one and c mid minus one should be less than equal to this otherwise this is greater than equal to this one this is the fourth half which is row start plus one comma c mid plus one right so this is equal to i can just put else over here by the way else all right cool i think that looks good and i can just call this function binary search one so in this case i need to search you know i can say binary search you can say return binary search in the matrix and i'm trying to search for what in the first half row start the row will be this in this row i'm trying to search from where till where i'm trying to search from 0 till column mid minus 1 from 0 till column mid minus 1 i'm trying to search for target okay what is happening in the second half second half i'm trying to search in the same row start okay but i'm trying to search for um what i'm trying to search for c mid plus 1 till end so I'm trying to search the start is going to be equal to what? Start is going to be equal to C mid plus one. End is going to be the, till the end. End is going to be equal to till the end, which is equal to entire column minus one. Okay. But here, one more condition I need to put. The target should actually be less than this also. Target should lie between this and this. There might be like other numbers over here. Because if I'm saying the target is greater than three, greater than or equal to three, it does not necessarily mean that it will not lie over here. <laughs> you might be like, okay, what Kunal, what if the target was seven? In that case, will it not search for here? No. So here I need to say if target is greater than three and less than four, greater than or equal to three and, and target should be less than or equal to uh, the last one. So matrix of uh, in the row start only it's going to be columns like the last column columns minus one okay now i'm searching in the third half in the third half is going to say that okay we are searching let me just hide this so we are searching in the third half for row start plus one which is the row we are searching for searching for row start plus one this is the row in which we are search searching for uh and what from where are we searching we are searching from the zeroth index till the c minus c mid minus one similarly in this last one i'm also searching in row start plus one and i'm searching from uh, c mid plus one and column till column minus one columns are remaining the same and only row is changing column remaining the same row is changing column remaining the same row is changing that is it that's your answer that's it 
let's try to run this program if i say int i can say array is equal to something like this you can say one two three four five six seven eight nine in the end i'm just going to say print array start to string uh, i can say my answer in the mid in the array try to search for target 6 it should give me 0 1 0 1 2 1 comma 2 it's giving me 1 comma 2 let's try to search for something that does not uh, exist like 89 or whatever should give me minus one comma minus one looking good let's try to search for nine it should give me two comma two two comma two that looks pretty good and we already discussed about the complexity for this as well so yeah that looks pretty good that was about this video but we're not done here because there are a few more questions i want to tell you about so there's this one question called a uh, kth smallest in a sorted matrix so even though we can do that via binary search, there are other ways to solve that problem. Like you can use heaps and stuff or priority queues, which we'll learn more about later. So I, I think it will be like a double work, you know, and it will be a, it will be a very mix up if I do that right now. And then I come back to that question again, you know, in the future video. So it makes more sense than I'll, that I'll do it in like when we do heaps only. Okay, so there are a few more questions that I want to do because some advanced level questions now that we'll be doing that will also be covered, that will also be basically using other data structures that we have not used before so like hash maps and stuff so make sure you do the assignments in the description below and uh, uh, if you like this video then subscribe and uh, as the course move, moves forward we'll be doing much more advanced questions like i have promised we did binary search i told you we'll be doing questions related to binary search we did that now we'll be doing let's say in the future videos uh, we'll also be doing sliding window and two pointer method okay so in that also we will only be doing like questions that are using just those methods when we do hash maps then we will be continuing these videos and we will do questions that use sliding window and two pointer with hash maps or with priority queue so it's not like a video is over over there only it's not like if arrays videos is done then we will not do arrays or if strings videos are done we will not do strings uh, in the future strings are like very important we will do strings in dynamic programming one of the most important topics in dynamic programming is strings so Please don't ask me questions like Kunal, how will you do this? How will you do that? When will you do this? When will you do that? It will be very bad for you if I try to solve questions that are using hash maps and heaps right now. It will be very bad for you because we have not covered that in the course. Does it mean that we are not going to do it? No, we are going to do it. When? When we cover hash maps and heaps. So have a little patience. I will cover everything in detail. When I have told you, I have promised you that this is a course that will get you interview ready. I mean it. Okay, we'll be doing a lot more questions. And as I've mentioned, theory for one and for questions, a separate topic. So as we move forward to more complex data, we have not started any major data structures right now. Trees are remaining, linked list, and so many other things are remaining. There we will get uh, graphs are remaining, DP, recursion. So there we will get more and more nice, nice questions. For that, every particular question, I'll be making separate, separate videos. So it's easier for you to revise. Okay, so theory videos different and uh, question videos different. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description below. Pause the video right now. Subscribe and share with your friends. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.